Good morning. Let's go and stand up together. We're so glad you're here. Good morning. You guys can have a seat. Hey, uh, happy Mother's Day. Let's give our moms a little hand clap. There you go. Hey, this is a very special time right now. If Oh, are the kids down here? The kids are not down here. The kids will wait. We're going to wait. We've got flowers for the moms. Uh, hey, we'll just move on with some hosting. We're so glad you're here. If you are here uh, for the very first time, we're especially glad that you're here. Uh, we like the regulars as well. But if you're a newbie, uh, we're glad you're here. If you have any questions about our announcements this morning or anything going on, you can see myself or Rob or go to our Get Connected table right back there. Wave your hand. We have someone lovely, gregarious Amy back there. Say, hey, Amy. Hey, Amy. There you go. Nice to talk to you this morning. Um, and also, if you're a new person and you want to know in more detail about specific areas of ministry, ways that you can get plugged in, or if you simply want prayer for something in your life, we have a connection card. The top part has an area where you can, it's perforated, you can take with you, and the bottom part is an area if you want to fill that and get any information uh, in specific areas, you can fill that out. So uh, we will not bite. Go on back. Actually, Amy might bite. So um, yes, go on back there and say hello. Uh, all right. 
Spring Spotify playlist. How many of you are grateful that spring is here? I am. Yes. Yes. It's so good. Um, every, yeah, I had some hand claps over there. Nice. Um, those of you who got back from Florida, yeah. Um, our spring Spotify playlist. Uh, every once in a while, every uh, six months or so, we do a playlist on Spotify to let you know some of the songs that we're currently singing uh, right here and some of the songs that we're going to sing over the next couple of months. And if you want to worship on your own time during the week. This is a great way. I love this. I listen to this playlist pretty often. Um, if you want to worship during the week, not just Sunday mornings, and have a little mono e mano time with the Holy Spirit, this is a great way to do that. So uh, be sure just to search for next chapter, and you will find it on Spotify. Uh, Women's Life Group is starting tomorrow. It's a study based on the Chosen series. How many of you watched The Chosen? You're into it? Yes. Very exciting. Cool. The Chosen Series. This is season two. It's a women's life group. It's every other Monday starting May 9th at 6.30. Yes, every other Monday night uh, in the church office, right in the front as you walk in. Um, And yes, let's go ahead and do this. We're going to roll that Mother's Day video, and then I'll say a little something afterwards. Uh, This is your chance, kids. You see these beautiful flowers right up here. As we play this next video, go find your mama, tell them you love them, give them a hug, and give them a flower. All right? Very cool. Let's go ahead and run that. Come on up and get a flower. Give it up for our moms again. Thank you for all you do. Hey, Mom. Thanks for all you do. Um, all right. A couple of other uh, quick, quick announcements. If you haven't heard yet, next chapter, new home. Yes. Oh, come on. Big announcement. New home. Yes. And uh, very exciting. It's so neat to see how God has just woven this little plan behind the scenes, a little partnership with uh, with Lakeside and our church, and there's plenty of flowers. Come up and get a few more. Yes, wonderful. Um, you'll see a little bit more about that as we take up the offering. Uh, one of the ways we worship is by giving our resources to God. I say it all the time. He owns it all anyway, and one of the, the greatest ways that we can display his character is to be generous, just like he's been generous with us. If you're here as a guest no need to give if this is your church home. Many different ways you can give. You can give online, on the app, old school mail. There's a drop box on the way out and via text. Let's show that number. You can text if you're on Facebook. Hi, good morning. You can text the letters TNCC to 833-287-4463. Let's leave that up as we pray, and then we'll take a look at a little video. Thank you, God, for your, your goodness. We thank you for the gift of moms this morning. And we pray a special blessing on our moms. That you would impart more grace in their lives. That you would bless them beyond their expectation. And that they would feel a deep sense of gratitude from from their kids in big and small ways today. God, we thank you for uh, the fact that you are a loving parent, that you are a loving father to your kids. And we ask that in in some way, if we don't have a deep picture of your nurturing heart and your gracious heart this morning, that that we come into a deeper understanding of that. And as we give our time and our energy and our resources, we give you the glory this morning. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.
Hello, next chapter. We are filming this in our new church home. We're in the auditorium where we'll be meeting on Sunday mornings and uh, already just bringing a few things here to the new building, to our new home. Uh, it just feels good. It's, uh, it feels very peaceful. Uh, maybe you've heard, maybe you haven't, but we are moving to Taylor Mill on June 12th. That will be our first Sunday gathering together here at our new home and the new building. Uh, for a few years now, the leadership team has been sensing stronger than ever uh, the need for our own building, our own place to gather. And so thankfully with the help of Lakeside Christian Church, uh, who used to meet here and owns the building, we are gonna get to call this our permanent building. We're gonna lease this space from Lakeside Christian for the next couple of years with an option to buy. And that's exactly what we plan to do is to buy the building. So we look forward to meeting all together. Come out and join us on June 12th. And we really do believe that greater things are still to come. That's cause to clap. I'm excited. Yes. All right, let's go and stand up together.
this morning, would you say that you're kind of feeling a little lost or like a little dead end in your life? A little cul-de-sac where you don't know where to turn? We can be honest. It's okay. I see some hands like this. I see some hands like this. It's okay. It's okay. We're authentic here. We're real here. And I love this, that God is constantly working, working things out for our good and his glory at the same time. I don't understand how that happens, right? But He's God. That's why he's God. That's why he's all those big words like omnipotent, omniscient, all-knowing, all-present, all that stuff. Like, he's able to do that, work things out for our good, ultimately, in his, his glory. And sometimes there's this step of faith where we just say, I, I know. I know you will. It might be painful. It might be an indirect route. It might be healing on the other side of heaven. But he is working something out for our good and for his glory. So we're just going to kind of say this phrase over and over as, as a way of believing, as a way of saying and believing that we know, we know he will, we know. Let's sing this together. I know you will. I know you will. Father God, we thank you that you do hold the world like the old school song. You hold the world in your hands. And that you haven't just like wound the clock and waited and stepped back, but you do have this uh, overarching plan and purpose for humanity as a whole and for our lives. We do trust that. And we know that you are constantly hitting the refresh button in our lives and that your heart is for us for your children for your people and we think that even during the darkest times like at at the death of your son Jesus that resurrection did happen and can continue to happen in our lives today so we ask that you would help us to trust you this morning in new ways we ask this in Jesus name amen you guys can have a seat Amen. Let me uh, add happy Mother's Day to all you mothers out there. And uh, I love the fact that the Bible tells us that human beings, male and female, were made in the image of God. And so whether you are a male or female today, you're made in the image of God. And because of that, like Brent said, I love it because God shows all of God's attributes in men and women. We need them all. And so moms, we're so thankful for you today. Um, I think in a lot of ways, uh, none of us individually in our, in our family lives or in the church life would be nearly far as along as we are without moms in our world. Um, our moms are, ooh, I got a little emotional on that. Thinking of my mama, my, our moms um, are oftentimes a safe place for us. They're a soft place, not always. Um, Our moms are the ones that we can talk to, not always, we can talk to and they will listen and um, 
we feel the most nurtured, although there's many dads that do that as well. And um, I don't know, as we were singing that song, it's such a great song. Such a great song. And I don't know where everybody is this morning. I know we all come in different, different, our weeks have been different. Um, but whether you're going through a relational difficulty or a divorce or a separation, um, I want you to know that um, God's making a way through all that. He will make a way for you through that. Um, whether you're going through watching the, um, the sad, your parents aging as that sad, that sad experience of aging parents, um, God will make a way. It was just, God will make a way in some way. Whether you're going through some physical ailment, so glad that uh, Wayne, Wayne Hoffman's with us in the house this morning. Wave your hand over, wave. <laughs> Wayne and Phyllis. Phyllis has been by his side. And uh, first Sunday, Wayne's been back probably in a couple months. He was diagnosed with leukemia. And we just keep praying for him because we don't know how long uh, he'll continue to be on this earth. But we sure pray that God will keep him on here a long, a long time. We love you, buddy. Phyllis, we love you. I know oftentimes being the caretaker can be harder um, on people than one realizes. So we love you. Keep praying for them. Keep checking in with them to see how we can love and serve them. I know Sherry Raleigh uh, is probably watching online. She's having knee surgery, I believe, tomorrow. Um, So whatever it is you're facing this morning, know that God will and can make a way. Sometimes even when I pray, I feel like this when I pray, I love when we say, I know you can, God. I know you can. But sometimes my prayers are like, I, I think, I know you can. <laughs> I'm like, I, I think you can. I know you can. Um, but may we be certain that God can always make a way. It may not look like what we think. It may not look like what we pray. Um, but God will always make a way. God is faithful. So let's pray again real quick before we jump into this third series, our third sermon of the parenting series. Again, if you're not a parent, hang with us. This applies to any relationship this morning, Uh, and it really applies to all of us because we're talking about selfishness, and we are some selfish, selfish people. I'm speaking to myself. All right, thank you. All right, let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Thank you um, for your character being exemplified through um, all the ladies of the world, whether they're moms or not. But God, on this day, we thank you for moms. We also know it brings a lot of different emotions. Um, For those grieving a mom that's passed, we pray you bring comfort. Um, For those that are needing somewhat of a a ray of hope, I pray that you give hope. I pray you give some peace to us today. God, thank you for loving us. And thank you for giving us a way when there doesn't seem to be a way. Give us faith today, extra measure of faith that we, um, that we can be certain that you always will make a way. Continue to move in this time, God, during the teaching time. We need you. We love you. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen. Amen. Kids can do funny things. I was just reflecting on some of my kids. Uh, for those of you that may know, not know, I have four kids. Uh, and now I have a bonus son with Ryland who graduates high school uh, just next week, actually. And, uh, and then we'll kind of be empty nesters. Hey! None of y'all care about that. But anyway, uh, I, it was, I was thinking about some of my, when my kids were younger and how they'll do things to stuff that you really care a lot about, but they don't realize, like, it doesn't cost them. I mean, doesn't, they don't really know the, how the way of the world goes. I remember um, I was tearing out a, before I got married to Jen uh, a year and a half ago, I was tearing out some sp- wooden, you know those old school wooden spindles? They were just kind of in the entranceway, and I didn't like them, so I was taking them out. But as I took them out, I recalled by looking at it, there was etched into one of the wooden spindles, KGR, which are the initials of my youngest daughter, Kennedy Grace Roy. But nobody knew who did it. <laughs> I'm like, oh, KGR, that's weird. Kennedy John. I didn't do it, Dad. Uh, and so I took those down. I took a picture and sent it to her. She's a sophomore at UK now. And uh, I probably should have kept it because it would just remind me, like, 
She's just being a kid, just etching her initials in the wooden spindles. And I'm like, what are you doing? Another time, Jackson, they, they would get on YouTube, or they would get on my laptop and do uh, all these photo booth videos and pictures. And that he and Kennedy had a band. And so I just got a new coffee table. And uh, he thought he'd grab some knives out of the, out of the and he was bang, playing the drums on the, and I looked down and it was nicked all over. I'm like, Jackson, what are you doing? I'm playing drums, Dad. <laughs> and so uh, that was great. And I, I just remember like, there's just so many things our kids do, just being kids, but it's like important stuff. So I'm like, oh, that's, I just bought that. Uh, and it is, it's so funny. It really doesn't have anything to do with the message this morning, but it just reminded me, I'm like, oh gosh, it is just so funny. We've looked at the last couple of weeks in the uh, First Corinthians chapter 13, which is the love chapter, uh, and we said the Bible doesn't have a whole lot to say about parenting, but we do know based on Jesus' command to love others as I have loved you, that works in any relationship. And then Paul comes along to his letter to the church in Corinth and says, love looks like this. And again, we can apply this to any relationship but it also is very applicable to, to, uh, well, to marriage, but to parenting. Matter of fact, it's probably the hardest in parenting because those relationships get so, they're so close and we knock heads with each other. So we looked at, just as a recap, 1 Corinthians 13, 4. It said, love is patient. We said, patient, be patient with your kids. Don't be pushy. Uh, nobody likes to be pushed. Love is kind. Loan them your strength and don't remind them of their weaknesses. The world will remind them of their weaknesses. Loan them your strength. It does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. Love does not seek to win at all costs. That's, that is, it's, it's, not, it's not envious. It's not proud. It doesn't boast. And then today I want to look at, or no, last week and then verse 5, we looked at this last week. It does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. We looked at the first part of that verse last week. It does not dishonor others. I think this is one of the biggest things we can do in our families, especially if your kids are still at home, is develop a culture of honor in your house. Honor is higher than obedience, you can have perfectly obedient kids, but it doesn't mean they'll have the, the spirit and the heart of honor. May we cultivate honor, that they would honor the moms and honor the dads. Honor one another as siblings. And then today I want to look at love that is not self-seeking and it is not easily angered. Basically this, parents, people, humans, love is not selfish. If we would just get this one, if I would just get this one area, all of our relationships would be awesome. If I just wouldn't be selfish. I'm selfish. You're selfish. All God's people are selfish. It's kind of inherent in us. We fight against that. I don't want to be selfish. That's not the way of Jesus, but that's what's in me. And so love is not selfish. Parents, it's not selfish. I think if we could, the more we can try to not make it about us in any aspect of life, especially parenting, the better. Put others' interests and needs above ourselves. Put your kids' interests and needs above yourself. I remember, this isn't in my notes, but I remember I think when Madison, my second daughter, was born. I loved playing. I still play softball, but things are changing. My eyes are changing, not nearly as fast as I was. My back hurts the next morning. But when I was younger and Madison was born, it was a stark reality like, I couldn't play softball that season. It was terrible. But I remember like, oh, I need to, I need to take care of my kids. I need to be here for my kids. And, and so I wanted to play softball and be selfish, but I didn't. So putting the needs of others and the interests of others first. And then it says, which is really interesting, love is not easily angered. So love is not self-seeking. It's not selfish. And it's not easily angered, which means this, um, it's interesting that that anger concept is really more of a, uh, it could be a cooking term or a baking term. It is love is not easily stirred up. How many of you can get easily stirred up, especially by your kids? <laughs> yes, I know. Thank you. Thanks, Todd. You're, but here's what's funny, and you've probably heard this before. Love is not easily stirred up. My kids hated this when I would say this to them. 
your kids really can't make you mad. They don't have the power to make you mad. Other people really can't make you mad. Oh, yes, they can. Oh, yeah. No, they really can't. What they're doing is they're stirring up something that's already inside of you. That's why it comes out, because it's in you. It's in me. It's like a baking, like if you're putting all the ingredients for a brownie mix and you stir it up, what's going to come out is brownie. It's not going to be a chocolate chip cookie. It's going to be brownie. So you stir all the mix. Once you stir all the mix in there, what comes out is brownie mix, brownie. And how many of you just love eating the batter? I, that's not really part of my message. But yeah, oh yeah. So what comes out of it is brownie. It's going to make brownies. The reason it stirs up and makes brownies because that's what's in there. It's brownie mix. And so we get so easily stirred up because that's what's in us already. There's this selfishness, and it gets stirred up. And, and so that's why my kids are like, Dad, yes, people can make me mad. And once it's, your kids are, people are going to stir your kids up. You're going to get stirred up by your kids. You're going to stir your kids up themselves. But it's our desire to have our own way, isn't it? And it can be good. I just want my kids to behave well, they're not behaving. I know, I'm mad. Why are you mad? Because <laughs> it's stirring me up. I'm not getting what I want, you know, and I'm mad. I just want them to go out and play. That's not bad, is it? That's not bad. But they're not going out to play. I'm stirring. And it stirs us up because that's what's in us. And so the truth is no one has ever made us angry. It has just stirred us up. And having those emotions stirred is just part of life. It's just inevitable. Uh, but here's what's, here's what's I, I would encourage you, I would encourage you when it comes to the emotional side of life, please talk that over with your kids. I think one of the worst things we can do as parents is not express our emotional side and not discuss it and help our kids with it because they're going to get emotionally stirred too. And if they don't know what to do about it, it's going to be really difficult for them. But I see and a lot of times it's dads, not all the time, but it's so difficult because I see a lot of times people who just, they're just stoic. They don't have any expression. They don't, they're stirred, but it doesn't come out. They just don't address it. And I think that's really unhealthy for our children. So may we discuss our emotional, the emotional side of things and have age appropriate conversations so that it's healthy for our children. There's a passage, uh, I talked about this before, uh, James, the brother of Jesus, the half-brother of Jesus, talks about this, and it's one of the most practical insights that you could hear about why we get stirred up. Why do we get stirred up in parenting, in marriage, in friendships, and relationships? And he says this, he asks a question, and then he answers it in James chapter 4, verse 1. He says, do you, you want to know what causes fights and quarrels among you? Yeah, Paul, we want to, or, yeah, James. Don't they come from your desire that battle within you? You want to know where all that gets stirred up? It's something within you. The source of all your conflict that, that's causing conflict in your home, in your marriage, in the workplace, in your family. Um, we're always tempted to point at somebody else, aren't we? I'm always tempted to point at someone else's words. Or did you hear the tone that they used with me? That was so disrespectful. Paul and James would say, no. Be, the reason it's stirred up is because it's already in you. And verse 2 tells us why. Your desire, you desire but do not have, so you kill. And you covet because you cannot get what you want. So you quarrel and fight. Oh, James, that's stupid. <laughs> that's so stupid. It's not that. He, he gives us a great practical part of that. The reason you get stirred up is because you don't rob. You don't get what you want. It might be what I need even. It might be what I deserve and I don't get what I need or I deserve or I want and it causes, it, it gets me all stirred up. And so I, I, one of the things Paul is saying with the love is not easily angered is this. May we take inventory in the middle of a conflict, there is always, I, I've had to apologize to my kids a bunch. You've probably apologized to your kids a bunch because at the heart of it, I'm not getting something that I want and it's causing a conflict and I'll take it out on the kids. It's not the kids' fault. It's what's stirring up within me because they're not doing, I want them just to quit picking on each other. 
I'm tired of being a referee when they were younger. Tired, well, even so, sometimes, sometimes down. But I'm, quit picking on, I just want you to quit picking on each other. And they don't. Why do I get stirred up? Because they're not doing what I want them to do. And there's nothing wrong with that. But that's what's stirring me up. It stirs you up with your spouse. It stirs you up with your coworkers. And so Paul gives us some really good practical advice here. And so may we as parents, maybe even in the middle of a conversation, say, you know what? Taylor, Maddie, Kennedy, Jackson, part of the problem is I'm not getting what I want. And that's why I'm getting stirred up. And that's on me, and I'm sorry. I'm sorry for behaving the way I have because that's on me. That's causing a lot of the conflict. So Paul says love is not self-seeking, therefore it is not easily angered. When we're not being self-seeking, it's really really hard to be angered. And when we talk to our kids and we get mad and we react and we get emotional, as I said last week, our words weigh so much on our kids. Be careful. May we be careful, starting with me. What we say and when we react to our children, because our words are weighty. Some of you remember the words that your parents said even now that were just heavy on you. So may we be careful. Are you easily stirred up? Are you willing to admit that the the ingredients are already there? It's just that you're not getting something that you really want. So may we apologize to our kids. Love is not self-seeking or easily angered. Or another way to say that is this. When love is not self-seeking, it will not be easily angered. I love that. When love is not self-seeking, it will not be easily angered. Then verse 5 says this. This is a hard one too. Verse 5 says, love keeps no record. I think it's going to be on here. Verse 5, no record of wrong. Love keeps no record of wrongs. This is difficult because we like to sometimes remind our kids what they've done wrong, don't we? Um, And the reason we like to do that is because it elevates us, it puts us in an elevated position. But as parents, we're already in an elevated position. We don't need to be more elevated. Anybody that holds the record of wrongs over you is trying to elevate their position over you. So as parents, may we not open a foul cabinet of all the things that they've done wrong. It doesn't keep records of that. Forgiving and pretending to forget is always our best bet. And actually, that's exactly what God has done for us. God doesn't even pretend to forget. The Bible says that God forgives and he casts our sin as far as the east is to the west. So when we do that, we're being like our Father in heaven. That's what God does for us. He forgives and he remembers it no longer. Verse 6 says this, Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. Love likes to catch, loves to catch people and celebrate people doing things right. May you catch your kids doing something right. You're always going to catch them doing something wrong. May we catch our kids doing something right and celebrate them. That's what love does. It's celebrate. Love does not wait to try to catch them and say, I got you this time. I got you. Or, or put them in a lose-lose situation. You know the answer, but you're just going to see if they're going to cooperate. And you know, Don't put them in a lose-lose situation. Um, but we want to always celebrate when they do things right. Catch them doing things right. Number seven, or Verse 7 says this, love always protects. Love always protects. It always defends. It always stands guard. It always keeps bad things out. This is probably one of the hardest ones as a parent. And I promise you, you will not get this one totally right. I did not get this totally right. You won't get it totally right. It's, it's difficult. It's difficult to know how much to protect and how much to start letting go of the rope a little bit, isn't it? And I'll tell you this, and you know this, it's much easier when it comes to freedom to let them have a little more freedom than to try to pull back freedom that they already have and have less freedom. And so this one, some of you are like, oh, I know I was way overprotective. I don't know that that's so bad. I think, I think it's probably better, if it has to be an extreme, it's probably better to be more overprotective than not. Because our kids just need a lot of guidelines, and they need a place to know um, what's appropriate and what's not. So err on the side of too much protection. Um, 
And I would say this, sometimes as a parent, I felt this way. Sometimes you feel like a bad parent. Because I said, no, no, you're not doing it. Everybody's doing it. I don't, I don't care. You're not doing that. And I would say sometimes um, love looks like the enemy and it's okay. Sometimes you're going to look like your biggest enemy of your children and it's okay because you're protecting them. But it's hard. It's hard to know that, that tension, that, bound, that boundary. And so I would say this, remember there are no perfect, there are no perfect parents, because I failed. There's no perfect parents. There are no perfect kids, and there are no perfect families. There's no such thing as perfect of any of those. But you know what's funny? I would choose to have typical kids who get in typical trouble but enjoy to be with me than to have a perfect kid with perfect behavior that did not want to be with me. Because I'm not perfect parent, so they wouldn't want to be with me, an imperfect parent. And I think one of the biggest things is, may we parent with a healthy adult relationship in mind. May we parent, and there be such a cultivation, a soil of honor, that as the kids become adults, they still want to be around us. There's many of you that have done this beautifully. You've, you've parented in such a way that you've kept a healthy relationship. And now your adult kids want to come around and hang around and bring their kids. Probably more than you want them to come around sometimes. But, but it's the, the ones that you can always tell when a, when a kid becomes an adult, if they don't come around very much, I don't know what all that is, but part of it is there's not a real healthy relationship there. So may we, may we parent towards a really healthy adult relationship with our children. And it comes through doing all these things that Paul says love looks like this. Um, the band can come on up if they would. I think a big part of it is just a lot of apologies along the way. I've, like I said, I've had to apologize to my kids a lot, um, even when I didn't want to. You know, there's just this nagging thing when you get alone after you've said something or done something, the Holy Spirit will convict me. I'm like, oh. I know that was the wrong thing to say. I know that was the wrong thing to do. But as soon as I go to apologize, it feels so much better. And uh, I still remember, and you probably do too, a defining moment when my dad apologized to me. He didn't apologize often. Um, but I remember a moment when he did, and it still to this day has had an effect on me. So may we get used to apologizing to our kids we started off by saying um, your behavior will determine if your kids will want to be like you or even be with you. So remember that. Your behavior will determine whether your kids want to be with you or even like you. So may we love our children. May we love our spouses. May we love our families, our coworkers, just as Jesus has loved us. Be patient. Walk at people's pace, not your own pace. May we be kind. May we loan people our strength and not remind them of their weaknesses. They know their weaknesses. May we celebrate their successes. When we see people, our children, doing things right, celebrate that. May we minimize their failure. We don't need people reminding us of all of our past mistakes. Create a culture of honor. Protect them. Trust, hope, and preserve. And I love this quote. I've been thinking about this a lot. This, this quote comes from Andy Stanley. It says this. The most significant thing you do may not be something you do. It may be someone you raise. I'm going to say that again because that's profound. I don't know what God has for me in store for my life. But it may just be raising all four or one of my kids that God uses in some profound, significant way. And God gave me the ability to, to influence them. So the most significant thing you do may not be something you do. It may be someone you raise. Parents, we have a huge responsibility. And we're not going to do it perfectly. And our kids aren't going to be perfect. But may we remember um, that love is not selfish and it's not easily stirred up. So when you feel yourself getting stirred up, just think about what are you not getting your way about? 
What is it that is not? I find myself doing this in my marriage. It's not fair to Jennifer, but I find myself like, why is she, why is she not taking my call? She takes everybody else's call. Why is she taking my call? I'm not getting my way. She should answer my call. I mean, stupid stuff. But it's, it's what happens with all of us. There's always a self-seekingness in it. May we just stop and realize it and then apologize to whomever it is, knowing that that's what our Heavenly Father has done with us. These are attributes of God. God is not pushy. Some of you, though, you don't have a chance because you're a marked man or you're a marked woman. God has been chasing you for a long time. He will not be pushy. He will be patient. But he desires to have a relationship with you. God is not selfish. God does not remind us of our failures. And God will always protect. God we can always trust. And God will always help us to persevere. So this morning, if you've never accepted Jesus, he would love to have a relationship with you. And that's what it looks like. That's what the love of God looks like. And so the Bible just says you just have to believe and trust that God sent him to die on the cross for our sin and that he raised so that we might have hope of everlasting life. If we believe that and confess that, the Bible says we will be rescued today and saved today. Others of us, maybe there's specific prayer needs that you have. I'm going to ask the prayer ministers to come on each side of the, of the stage. During this next song, um, feel free to come up and pray for whatever it is that may be on your spirit. Let's pray together, and then we'll close with this song. God, thank you for um, showing us what love is. God, thank you that you are a personal God. From the very beginning, you wanted to be in relationship with us. So you sent your son Jesus and you've forgiven us because we're not perfect. You knew your kids would not be perfect, but that wasn't going to keep you from being in a relationship with us. So you made a way for us to be with you. So thank you for forgiving us. And thank you for giving us a way to have a relationship with you. Father, I pray for all of us as families today. I pray for those parents who have small children, that you would help them raise them with all of these characteristics and attributes. God, for those of us that have middle-aged children, may we remember that we will always be parenting no matter how old they get. And for those of us with older children, God, I pray that they would be blessed and honored by the way that their children um, deal with them and handle them and and are in relationship with them. God, we thank you for your great love. May we now, as we continue over the next days and weeks and months, may you help us um, to have what we're going to sing about, this idea that as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. We're going to serve the Lord. We're going to focus upon the Lord. We're going to have a a culture in this house that loves the Lord and love looks like 1 Corinthians 13. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me and let's sing right now, please. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love forevermore. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Serve the Lord. Sing again. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will sing of your love. Oh,
open up every door, writing on every wall, singing in every room. Open up every door, writing on every wall, singing in every room. see you next week. Remember, June 12th is when we move. I, sometimes I don't want anybody to get confused. Like, are we here? Are we there? So June 12th will move. We'll keep reminding you every week, uh, but we're excited about that and uh, look forward to, you know, e even in the way that all that's come about, um, you know, 15, 15 years in August will be the next chapter has been going on. And uh, in some ways, it's been a long time and it's been tiring. Uh, and maybe just to let you know, uh, maybe you feel that way. It's been a long time. It's been tiring. Uh, but may we just keep being faithful. Um, and God will always make a way in some way. So even if you're tired and you're worn out, just keep doing the next right thing and be faithful because God is moving in all of our lives. Let's pray. God, thank you for this day. Again, we thank you for the mothers that have had such an impact in our lives. Pray that you bless them today. I pray that they would feel honored by the way that we uh, treat and behave and talk to them today. God, I thank you for uh, inviting us as imperfect people to be a part of your capital C church, that we would love the world the way that we've talked about here. So help us, God. Help us to go and be selfless in the way that we love and interact. It's in the name of Jesus that we pray. And everybody said, amen. See you next week. Open up every door, riding on every wall, singing in every room. Open up every door.